So welcome, Allison. You and I have just had a little conversation on some interesting achievements you've made with optimal EFT and the unseen therapist. So I thought we would do a little recording, you know, so we could put some of these for other people to learn from or some of our impossible healings. You have been using your skills in some creative ways. Now, a lot of these has to do with your family and things like that, but I, I want to go over some of these because I think our others are really going to find this interesting. Um, you had this thing with your th son and his braces. And I'm going to have you tell the story in a minute. But just in essence, he had lost, you know, something about his braces. He was all panicked about that. You basically asked unseen therapist and surrogately he got some kind of an image which was way out of the possibility realms, you know, no coincidence. You, you couldn't call it coincidence. And he found it. But tell the story. I mean, I just gave a highlight, but tell the story. So, yes, we were looking for my son's elastic bands for his braces and he'd gone into a panic and we looked for them for about half an hour all around the house. And eventually I just said, look, that's enough. I laid down and I was trying to put the other two kids to sleep and he was still very upset about it. So I, I basically, you know, created that loving moment, recalled the loving moment, called on unseen therapist. And it was kind of in desperation and been a half an hour of a lot of stress. Yes. And I was, and I, and then within two minutes, he suddenly stopped crying and then he ran off and he came back with the elastic bands and he said, mum, I suddenly got this image in my mind of myself and I was bending down and I was looking under the sofa and the elastic bands were underneath something that was underneath the sofa. No, wait a minute. So let, me, let me stop you there. He was getting an image. He was getting an image in his mind of looking under the sofa and this thing was underneath something under the sofa. Yeah, he, he so, got that image. He got that image first. He got that image of himself looking, and okay. then he ran, and he went looked under the couch, and there was a cushion underneath the couch, and underneath the cushion was the elastic bands. All right, now <laughs> you and I talked about this before, but I, I, I have to I have to bring this up. The skeptic might say, "Oh, come on, that's just coincidence," but let's think about that for a minute. You're asking unseen therapists, the spiritual dimension, where is this thing? Your son is panicking. Nobody has any idea where it is. You're asking, he gets an image in his mind. It's under the couch. It's under something under the couch. He goes and indeed it's under something under the couch. And there it is. Now the odds, the odds of that being a coincidence the odds against that being a coincidence? I don't even know the number, it's so big. One in umpty zillion or something. <laughs> exactly, he was, I said to him, it was the unseen therapist. I mean, he's 12, you know, 13, 12 at the time, but they're learning early. <laughs> <laughs> well, good, good. <laughs> a lot of us should learn earlier than we're learning, okay? Now, that's one. And this, that was a surrogate thing you were doing. You weren't doing that with your son. You were doing that in his behalf. No, and the issue I do have with him, with my kids, if I tap to calm myself down, they get cross. They're like, mom, stop tapping. It's like they want me on the battlefield to engage. So that's why the conversational EFT is super helpful for me because I can do it and they don't know. <laughs> okay. And so, so for our listeners, converse, tapping is one form. It's sort of a... a a yesterday's form, but a useful form of, of EFT. Conversational EFT is a form where we're inviting in the spiritual dimension, the unseen therapist, to join us in something. We're asking for guidance in a way and so on. So, that, And that's what you were doing. You were doing this, you call it conversational EFT, but it's a form of surrogate EFT. I, I got that right? That's right. All right. Okay. That's one. Now you gave me several. We're not going to go over all the all of them, okay? But another one you gave me, which was also surrogate work, had to do with your barking dog. I said that right? 
Yes, she can get, she's a, a rescue dog and she can get quite aggressive with men that come into the house, visitors. Okay, so you had visitors in the house and typically when they want to get up, like go to another room, go to the bathroom, for example, she will get yappy and barky and... Yeah, quite aggressive. She will, and she's a black dog, so she can be quite scary looking and she can, um, yeah, scare people okay. a lot. All right, so... Tell the story. What what did you do? Use your words. Basically, I just uh, did optimal EFT surrogately on the dog, on my dog Nita. And I closed my eyes and I recall the loving moment, thought about things that are scaring her, kind of imagining that I was her and how she was feeling and then bringing in the unseen therapist. And I did it maybe a couple of times, but not very long at all. And then the next time these people were coming over, uh, she was calm and they were saying, well, what, what happened with the dog? Cause my, it had been so bad. My, my husband was saying, we need to get some kind of therapy for the dog or we need to go and see someone about the dog. And so they were saying, what did you do? Did you tap on the dog? I said, I'm not telling you because they, I thought they would be skeptics. So I said, look, the results speak for themselves. <laughs> Is the dog calmer? And they were like, yeah, it's amazing. They were all blown away about the difference, the fact that she was just so calm and not following them and barking aggressively. Yeah. Now, what's interesting is you don't really run around inside your dog's, I was going to say shoes, but dog's paws or whatever. You know, you're not, you have to, in a way, sort of make up, if that's the right term, whatever specific events, whatever emotional issues may be triggering this barking behavior. So I gather you did that. Talk about that a little bit, would you? It's more the fear. I think she, she was the rescue dog. So for, we got her when she was three months old. And so we seem to think that she was born on a construction site because she's very aggressive towards Chinese men in sort of the late in, in construction worker outfits. Mm -hmm. And so um, and even men generally. So I basically just thought of the things that would scare her and then just bringing peace and reassurance and asking unseen therapist to, it's more about the fear because obviously the barking is due to the fear. So really imagining yeah. fear as a ball as well inside of her. I remember doing that and then letting the unseen therapist come with the loving light to like appease that fear. Yeah. Okay. And so how long ago did you do that? And have you had any problems since? Uh, probably three months, three, four months ago. And no, she's been much better. I mean, she's not always perfect, but that level of aggression, we haven't seen with her. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Alison, thank you very much. This is going to be of a, a big help to a lot of people. I can, I can assure you.